With over 1,300 entertainment industry guests and over 6 million viewers, live from the Pepper J Production Studio in Hollywood, California, it's the Actors E Chat Show, every Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Time, a Pepper J Production. It's the Actors E! Chat Show. Hi, and welcome to Actors E! Chat. I'm your host, Pepper J. If you were looking for Ron Burrington, he wanted to be here so much because today's guest is one of his faves. Yes, but he had a flat tire. Maybe he'll come in before the end of the show. And speaking of today's guest, he's probably one of the most recognizable actors in the world from his chilling, chilling performance in Candyman to his lead role in Platoon, theater actor, filmmaker, writer, producer extraordinaire. Please welcome Tony Todd to the show. <laughs> That's a pleasure to be here. You left out proud parent. Proud parent. My daughter is getting ready to, to graduate grad school at Columbia University, and that is probably my singular best accomplishment. Isn't that time. funny how life is? That's it really is true, isn't it? It's amazing. It really is true. Yeah. I, I love my kids. My of the colleges, I didn't graduate. Oh. <laughs> I did go back to theater school. I went back to Trinity Rep Conservatory in Providence, Rhode Island, which right. was Tony for theater excellent, and uh, you know, that turned my life around. Well, theater's Pepper always been your love, but it's, let it's me ask you this question. How did you know you wanted to be, when did you know you wanted to be in this business? Well, you know, I ask myself that continually because it's not the most, uh, let's say, rewarding business collectively, but for me, I've had a good path. Uh, when I was in high school, I had a tremendous growth spurt, like I grew six inches and, and you know, I was that geek that everybody sometimes feel, but they try to disguise, but nerds rule. And, and I was totally uncoordinated. I would walk down the hallway and coaches would just shake their heads because oh God, look at all that wasted potential. But an English teacher one day, she, I guess she like saw a glint in my eye and she handed me a copy of Shakespeare's Tempest. Wow. Read it overnight and it was like a world opened up and I said, okay, there's something that I can use my inner nerd and find a focus and from that moment on that was it. And so did you participate in high school plays? Yeah, yeah. The first thing I did was a production of Dracula. I didn't play the title character, but I played Van Helsing, who actually talks more. So I guess <laughs> that was something. But it, it just, it was like, you know, when you have a calling right. and, it, and it seeps inside and allows you to have some sort of uh, understanding of life that's deeper than you, then, right. then that's it. You don't walk away. And yeah. I was able to got my master's in theater and uh, oh, so you read and years. studied. Where did yeah, you teach? Yeah. I taught in Providence at the uh, Rhode public Island. school, Rhode Island. Yeah, beautiful, which is where the beautiful. School was. Eight middle middle school, you know, kids that have just before they had formed. I love teaching middle patterns. school. Isn't yeah, that the taught, best? Right? Yes, great. I did. Every day, somebody would be awakened. Yes. And I wanted to give back. Just well, like that someone, English some teacher. teacher Changed your life completely. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. So be nice to your teachers. <laughs> yeah, you never know when inspiration comes. That's you know, right. It could be from, uh, I also was in the Boy Scouts. I was raised by a single woman, my aunt, who rescued right. me when I was three. Wow. And uh, she couldn't have children, and I became her whole world. Didn't realize we were poor until I was around 13, because there was food on the table. Right. There was love in the house. One of my early love of movies came from watching the 8 o'clock movie every night. And she would use it as, you know, things like Public Enemy or uh, Roaring Twenties. And she would use these things as morality lessons. Oh, I see. And, and we would have discussions, but I also formed wow. a love for basic cinema action and, and, and diversity. Well, wow, that was like an amazing experience oh, and opportunity for God. you. And so, Rest so lucky. Peace. Without her, amazing. I wouldn't be here. Well, it's good to know who to be appreciative mm. of. And uh, some it of us are really lucky. It could be as simple as a janitor in a high school that, like, says, hey, kid, you know, you, you need a quarter, you want to get extra milk at, at lunch today, or uh, you never know. You never know. You never you know. Never Life knows. is a wonderful umbrella. It is. It's a gift. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me, uh, how did you get from the teaching then to your first professional gig? Was You were doing theater before you did TV and film? Yeah, yeah. I was in Hartford, Connecticut, which is where I grew up. And I was, uh, after the teaching gig ended in Providence, I started an, an after-school program with a bunch of kids that, I, that everybody deemed uh, 
incorrigible yeah. uh, wrestlers. But they came to me every day, Monday through Thursday, from 5 to 8, and I was like giving back what I had learned and reinforcing the things that I had been taught. I had wonderful teachers, people out of the actor's studio, and blah, blah, blah. Beautiful. At some point I realized, you know what? I need to practice when I'm preaching, and I need to go to New York City, which is the mecca in the beginning and end for everybody pretty much in show business. That's a big step. Yeah, it was a big step. My car, I had a broken down sob, and it literally <laughs> broke down on the Harlem River Drive just five blocks away from the cousin that was going to put me up for two weeks. Wow. Two and weeks you turned were were, two uh, You were young then, so that's a little <laughs> yeah. scary, and that uh, was very no, brave. I was, I'm fearless. You know, people ask me. Uh, I, even I, then? I, yeah. Good yeah, for you. once I had gotten out Good of high you. school, you know, you learn to reinvent yourself. Right. And, uh, you know, I, you, you, you got it. People ask me, people I went to school with who were wonderful actors. Uh, there's only three of us. We had a graduating class of 25. Three of us are working professionally. Wow. People ask me, what, what's the secret? How do you do? You got to have tenacity. Right. You got to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. And you got to be fearless. You got to just know that when it's ready for you, it's going to happen. Wow. You can't push that river. You just and you got to be prepared when the opportunity presents, presents itself. Wow, 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 wow! So. And you're still doing theater, and I'm going to yeah. tell people: stay tuned for the end because this gentleman is doing a one-man show. The that's second going ever in my life. Rock. It's going to rock. rock. We're going. And, this and is the first step on the way to New York know, City. Hey, anytime you ever want to know something about Tony Todd, you go to his Facebook and his Twitter. His Twitter is Tony Todd fifty four. Thank you. Right. At. Yes, at. <laughs> there it is, right there, isn't it? There we go. Wait, where's my finger? There it modern goes. Modern technology. Modern technology. What I a love crew it. you got here. Oh, in the yeah, studio. they're hot. They're hot. I Jeremiah love this working Joseph, board. John, it's just you know, pop, great pop, pop. Oh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's great. So, you did some theater. What was your first film TV break? Well, uh, I got my equity card two weeks after I got to New York. So once again, an example of fearlessness. Well, let me never... interrupt you. Equity card. You've okay. heard of SAG. You've heard of AFTER. They're actors' unions that have now merged. Right. Actors' equity is the union for theater actors, professional right. theater right. actors. Getting an equity card is very difficult. Right. So you tell me after <laughs> after being in there two weeks how you got yours. Uh, because as soon as I arrived, my new I only had two weeks at my cousin's house, and I opened a Village of Waste, which was the Bible in New York City at right. the time. And in the back had all the listings for places, and there was a job offering for this theater called uh, the Working Theater. And I went over there, and I got it, and I got the job. When I want something, when I audition, First of all, you got to be prepared, and you right. got to use 100% of your instrument to right. find the things that you can relate in your life that relates to that character or that situation. And I told them they had to hire me, and they believed me. Well, you know, the and only I'm difference bold. between people that are successful and not successful, in my opinion, there's Actors Equity logo, is doing it. And that's what this gentleman has done. Doing He's it, seen believing in, the in yourself. the opportunity, the good opportunities. Yeah. No one to leave the not-so-good opportunities not happening. Doing it, believing in yourself, and making it happen. Right. And so that theater was which? What was the that? The Working Title Theater. The Working yeah, Title Theater. Yeah. It Fabulous. Was a, yeah, it was, a, it was a socialist theater, and we toured the country. It was the first time I got to see America. Wow. We went to almost every major city in America. That's your first experience. Yeah, see, that's like yeah. uncanny. 400 bucks a week at that time. It was a lot know. of money. Well, it wasn't Still a lot of money, but it was my money, and it came from, <laughs> <laughs> and it came from doing what I love doing right. most. That's right. So, it yeah, did. I was happy. And how long? Did you do the whole New York theater? That scene? well, that was three years. I, I did two years of bartending at this wonderful place called the West Bank Theater Bar. Oh, and uh -huh. so uh, I was able to do plays there. I, would, I did a one-man show called Johnny Got His Gun, written by Dalton Trumbull, another socialist uh, thing. And uh, and then, but my my boss, Steve Olson. I do the show, standing over and he says, okay, now get back behind the bar, make sure you get those <laughs> yeah, bottles we've done up here tonight, right? Uh -huh. and, uh, but with Johnny Got His Gun, Oliver Stone's people saw it. And uh, oh, next and thing you know, you got I got a too. call, oh, and I, I'm auditioning with Oliver Stone for four hours, you know, what, what? And then uh -huh. on that Monday, it was like singing in the rain. It was raining in New York, and I was on Fifth Avenue, and I got the call. And wow. I called my aunt, who was my confidant, and I right. said, guess what, I got a movie. And she said, great, where is it? And I said, the Philippines. She hung up on me. <laughs> because at that time, Marcos is in the country. Oh, was yeah, that's turmoil. right. And that's I said, right. look, I've always listened to you. You've always right. pushed me to believe in myself. 
I'm going to be all right. I'm, I'm going to go, go do this it. thing. We didn't know what Platoon was going to be at the time. You didn't we know it was going to be an Academy no, Award winning movie. No. And you were going to be the lead. Well, I wasn't the lead. Well, I was, my, I, well, I was the among, biggest. No, I was the tallest. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, was among, I was among a stellar cast. Yes, it was included, amazing. You know, so many people did it. Oh, Everybody great. in it went on to have a career, which right. is amazing. And yes. at that time. And there it is, Platoon. And, and we were talking, to, you were Thank talking you. to John Ferrari, one of our producers here early in the show, and he was saying how realistic it was mm -hmm. compared to when he was really in the Army in yeah. Vietnam. Well, we had great technical advisors that believed in what we were doing, and oh, they yeah. wanted to tell the story. And Oliver, even though he was a photographer, spent time right. in the battle lines. And we just had great people, and we had a great country it substituted for Vietnam, I think, nicely. Uh, and, uh, and we had a cast that loved each other. Right. you got to have love in this business. If you don't have love, you don't do... And Things. There is There's uh, Mr. Stone, Oliver Stone, yeah, who to this day, whenever he sees me, he says, "I made you." <laughs> yeah, well, he's probably right. <laughs> he's probably right. And so, let me ask you: you know, you didn't have any experience being in films, and here well, you are dropped no. into this huge thing. Right. Uh, you didn't probably know the difference between who the janitor was or the light man. No, and, and but yet you know you what? You went forward. Uh, uh, I've learned, no matter whether you do theater or film, I always introduce myself to everybody in the crew because I know that every single person in the crew, is his important. job is important, That's and right. without this missing cog, the whole thing That's doesn't get done. Right. So right. whether you end up wanting to have a job in front of the camera or behind the camera, just know whatever position you have is essential to That's the completion correct. of that task. That's absolutely correct. Wow, this is so fun, and I am so honored. Yeah. You are watching Actors Eat Chat. I'm your host, Pepper J. and we'll be right back after word from one of our sponsors. We love our sponsors! Hi, I'm Anna Shaw Ray, here to share with you a terrific online gift store, artistore.com. Artistore is an online art colony of completely original and absolutely affordable gifts and fine art. Artistore is particularly fun because it includes many unique and one-of-a-kind gifts, cards, and wall art that you can't get anywhere else. For example, in the gift section, Artist Store carries beautiful apparel art ties. Yes, art ties! Ties hand decorated with jewelry, fringe, beads, and all sorts of stuff. Animal art ties, art deco ties, music ties, you name it! And best of all, the ties are for both men and women and can be worn well with a pair of jeans or in a tux. Artist Store also has inspirational corporate jungle posters. Joe Sabatino likes the poster of the hippo. He put it on his refrigerator to remind him of what not to look like. <laughs> yes, clown art, custom airbrushed t-shirts, hand knit scarves, photography, handmade decorated soaps, and more all on one site, artistore.com. I especially enjoy the artwork by Brennan section of Artistore. Brennan offers his artwork on note cards, mugs, and wall art. Whether it's cocktail ladies, a smoking clown, or Ben and Becky's art for a child's room, Brennan's unique watercolor or pen and ink art will be perfect for the occasion. And when you use the discount code ACTORSRECORDER at checkout, you'll get 10% off your entire Artistore order. Artistore.com. That's spelled A-R-T-I-S-T-O-R. -T That's A-R-T-I-S-T-O-R. Check it out. You'll be glad you did. Artistore.com for all your unique gift needs. And welcome back to Actors E Chat. I'm your host, Pepper J. And please visit our sister channel, Actors Reporter. It's an amazing online magazine, daily news links, interviews, red carpets. And if you click on that little link that says discounts, it'll take you to our, our discount page for all of our wonderful sponsors. There's Sandro Minetti has a video download for how to interview, how to be interviewed, performer track, Anina Fausch. Everything you need to know if you want to be a director, children in film, business and marketing for the actor, Actors Connection over in New York, and now Media Productions over in New York. Lots of wonderful sponsors. Get your discount using the promo code Actors Reporter. And here we're back. Really, I am honored. I think this is the third time I've used that word. <laughs> with it's the Tony second, Todd. but who's counting? Okay, who's counting? <laughs> Tony Todd, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So, what a way to start my Monday Well, it's week. wonderful. In the yeah. Philippines and... After Platoon, yeah. well, what happened next to you in your career? I mean, um, you've been so sought after. Well, it was heady. We didn't know, had any idea where that film was going. And uh, Forrest Whitaker was a friend of mine. And I came out to visit 
Forrest uh, Whitaker. Yeah, amazing, tremendous actor. Amazing, Great yeah. person. Better human being than people really realize. But it comes through in his work. And uh, I, I stayed with does. him for two weeks out here and saw California and said, wow, the place that doesn't get cold in those tetris months like it's happening in the rest of the world right, today and in America. Forrest Whitaker. There you go. Uh, extraordinary actor. Yes. Good person, still a good friend, yeah. and uh, that was it. Once I went to uh, Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles, that was it. I said, Roscoe, wow, you know Larry I'm Ritter's gonna be, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Oh, very um, good. And then, uh, so you know, I tooled around, I did the whole actor's journey. Stayed at the SRO hotel when I first got here, standing room only. <laughs> I didn't know hall. what that meant. You didn't? SRO, no, yeah. 65, uh, I didn't know. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. for those that don't know, you, know, you have to know. pay your dues. Yeah. And but I was only there for two months, mm -hmm. and I, I got. Uh, a TV episodic called Simon and Simon. Wow. Bought a car. Yay. And no longer had to take the bus. But oh, I did that yes. two Big week step. on the bus going to auditioning. And especially in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. Simon and Simon was, awesome. and Simon was a great to. TV show to, yeah. uh, to start on. There it is right there. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then I started doing like a lot of television. A lot of television. Like almost every show that was I on. I don't know that there's a show that you haven't been on yeah, really if I think been, about I think it. It's, you know, it's a good amount of credits. But yes. then, then, then Platoon came out and all of a sudden Everything everybody that was were. in it was on the list. Right. So I started getting, you know, more significant appointments. Uh, but I consider every job important to the progress of where you are as a There's person. There's 21 Jump Street. Work. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Just right. about every TV show. Unbelievable. Yeah. And then even even more recently, some of the things like X-Files and right. the Star Trek uh, phase. So it's now, really different uh, being on a TV show. You come in as a guest star. Mm -hmm. You're coming into a team or a family that already exists. They already know each and, other. And some of the people around the world that watch this show would love to be you <laughs> uh, or be with you, one mm -hmm. of the two. Uh, any advice for them for being a guest star in uh, TV shows? Well, you just got to realize that usually the guest star is given the dramatic arc in any particular situation. So you got to make sure that you come with your A game. You know, don't be intimidated by people that you may have seen, you know, before in your living room but never really met. And do your job. And acting is a moment to moment. So if this person says A, you respond with A plus, and it goes back and forth like a ball, and you play the truth of the situation. And do not be intimidated. Right. You know, usually they need you to spark whatever uh, lackadaisicness that they are into because of the familiarity of the characters. So it's fun. I don't mind it. I've also done several pilots. I've never did a, a series regular. Right. And to be honest, I never really wanted to because I. I'm You're sort of stuck there. I'm, aren't a, you? I'm a character actor. Uh -huh. I like playing. Whatever I play last, I make sure that the next character is completely different. Well, you are. Your yeah. characters are like just extraordinarily uh, and different. Well, it's a range. And we That's like all those little friends that I played right? with in my mind when I was a little child. And now I'm getting paid as an adult. And to, imagination uh, in children is so, so important. It has to be coddled. Can you tell me a little bit about, it was such a chilling performance, Candyman? I uh, mean, my goodness, how did you get to that spot? Boy, that spot. Well, how'd you um, become that it character? Wasn't like I, it wasn't like I decided one day that I want to focus on horror films. Right. I did a film in Africa called The Last Elephant, and uh -huh. that's the other beautiful thing about acting. You get to travel the world. Right. I've been to Africa. I've been to Saudi Arabia. I've been to uh, England, Scotland. I mean, my work has taken me to wonderful places that I never in my life imagined that I would get to see. Oh, there's Candyman poster. There it is. Yes. Wow. Not many of those things I've signed over the course of my life. Uh. <laughs> Buka, box. Which is another, which, yeah, which is the, another uh, <laughs> benefit be of time. being an actor. <laughs> you know, the, our, the convention circuit. Right. But um, uh, uh, Bernard Rose, the director of Candyman, saw me do this film that uh -huh. had James Earl Jones, Isabella Rossellini, John Lithgow, wow, and myself in. What was Four the name months of that film? in Nairobi, The Last Elephant, sometimes aka elephant. the Ivory Hunters. But oh, anyway, nice. uh, he saw it and he said, "That's the person that what I want." That? What are we looking at that's here? from Candyman. Oh, that's Bernard from Rose. Candyman. Yeah. I see. It's legendary. The film is 22 uh -huh. years old. Wow. Not a day goes by in one of our now distinguished supermarkets. Now, this is the picture that I know from you, from Candyman. I mean, that's just like, you're scary, mister. You can turn well, into you a gotta really know, scary... Well, you got to know the backstory of this. Okay, I mean, Candyman was an artist that right? fell in love with a white woman in the turn of the century. Okay. And he was chased down and lynched. Okay. And, and his hand was cut off as punishment for his crime. In, wow. in the world, of, it's more like a Phantom of the Opera. They cut off his uh -huh. hand and put a hook in there. So, 
in wow. present world, well, he's like trying to that. he's trying to reclaim the things mm -hmm. that were taken from him. So it's not just a it's sort of revenge type. Yeah, or it, 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 well, it's a it's a it's a, a, to it's, it's a it's a love story that was unrequited right. that that he's trying. It's a gothic dark love story that's resonated with people all over the world. And when you're a bad guy or somebody that's going around, well, doing I don't think of him as a bad guy. That's exactly my point. Right. You, you don't think do of him. You can never do that. You, you don't play the obvious. You play the that's inner that's secret. Right. And what is this from? It's also from oh, Kenya, uh, the lovely I, Virginia Madsen. Oh, was my, my goodness star. gracious, yeah. yes. Her and her brother, good friends of mine, Michael Madsen. Oh, lovely actress. Yeah. And tell me a little more about The Last Elephant. Do we have a poster for that? We, that sounds fabulous. Yeah, it was Where, about it was about Nairobi? ivory poaching. Nairobi, Kenya is where we shot it. Right. It was about the elephant poaching that still goes on to this it's, day. Which is remarkable to me. Yeah. That, that and it's when, still happening. First time I go to Africa and, uh, you know, and you see the wildlife, you see zebras in their, right. in their natural environment. Right. And I say that and you, people, you do not understand the power of seeing a herd of zebra running through the wild or wildebeest wow. or or j i stayed at uh Kadoshi's house that was where they put us up who was the richest man in the world oh, and we had giraffes at like clockwork in the morning would nuzzle open the window and yeah. say hello i mean until you see that wow. and you understand the beauty and the potential of our world's treasures then you haven't lived yeah it's god's gift we yeah it is it. yes absolutely yeah, that's we should appreciate every it. single day every wow. second so, I mean, you have so many, so many credits, I really don't know where to land. Uh, what was, let's start with, what was your next big film that you did? Well, there was, the, the Star oh. Trek experience is huge. Oh, because, gosh, and you everybody know, knows you from Star Trek. Yeah, yes. I, I was lucky to play three different characters. Mostly, mainly I played Worf's brother. Worf is a Klingon, and Klingons yes. rule. And, uh, I had you a know, crush on him. Yeah, Michael's Klingons. a wonderful person. Yeah. Um, but I, I did a lot of mainstream films, The Crow, uh, right. Not Living Dead, the remake, which is also popular. Right. Uh, you know, how about what we're doing now? Because actors always remember what they're doing <laughs> What they're doing now. Until, oh, now, here you go. Give me a little closer on that if you can. Let me see all There's that. There's Michael up in the top corner. There's, There's the Avery crow. Brooks in the bottom, another good friend of mine. I mean, that's like you've been involved in some of the most iconic films and TV shows ever. Ever. I didn't go out intending to do that. I just wanted to do good, honest work and to represent the places that I trained in and people that have wow. made an impact in my life. That's just so, so remarkable. And then even now, I was looking at your IMDb page. IMDb is Internet Movie Database. It's a good old and database. that's where you can go <laughs> to see television and film. Right. It's not for theater, no. there's theater. There's a Broadway. And this moment. is? That's, that's my Worf character, I mean, my current character. Uh, That's you. Clinton. Yeah, four hours of makeup that took. Uh, Isn't that difficult thing, to be sitting that? No, long? no, not at all. Because if you're if you're really a, a receiving actor, every single moment that that takes to put on the prosthetics right? and the work, you're transforming into the character. Good makeup people are helping you do your job. You shouldn't resist any department in making film or television. Everybody's so there for smart. a reason. The lighting person is there to make uh -huh. you look better. Yes. The sound person is there oh, to make you sound Oh, there you are. There, your clear. cousin's on the show. No, brothers. Brothers. Yeah, I'm brothers. a younger brother. He's a human eyes, and uh -huh. I'm a pure Klingon. It's so nice the way that they made them make it kind of look like you were in the same family. Mm. With the hair. The hair. You see, he combs his hair. Mine is wild. And uh, somehow that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't surprise me at all. And, and, and Star Trek, three. what other two characters did you play? Um, well, in uh, Deep Space Nine, uh, oh, I right. played uh, Jake. Older Jake. It was an mm -hmm. episode called The Visitor, which won a Hugo Award. It's arguably one of the best episodes ever made in Star Trek. Wow. I've been honored. The woman that raised me, my aunt, had yes. passed away. Oh, and yeah. it was like an inconsolable time for me. Oh, I didn't sorry. even know if I could continue. It's okay, because I got through it. Right. Out of the blue, they sent me the script, which is about the love between a child and, 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 their, and their parent. And oh, it was like she was speaking to perfect me. Perfect timing. And it got me up out of the shell and made me do one of the best jobs I've ever done oh, in my life. Oh, very nice. So... Very, very nice. We have a chatter question. I want to thank chatter all of our away. yeah, we, all of our chatters from all awesome. over the world. We really appreciate you here on Actors Eat Chat. Uh, chatter, what's uh, on Star Trek? Uh, most of the actors are um, Shakespeare trained. Is that yeah. correct? Uh, a lot of them. Yeah. Is that why Patrick they chose Stewart. you? I don't know. Uh, you know, I had auditioned for them five times before I got the role that ultimately helped to my notoriety, and. Uh, I knew they liked me. I wanted to be on the show, and that last time I was at the Paramount 
Studios and at the Marks Building, and I literally couldn't get out of the door when he said, "Report the wardrobe." The oh, wardrobe beautiful. in this case is playing with Klingon stuff. So you got the boots that don't fit, the tight, <laughs> the hair, and, oh, it, right. and you're ready to rock and roll, man. That is so funny. Yeah. That is so funny. Awesome. And and actually, recently, before we get to his one man show, and I want to remind you, okay. It's Tony Todd 54 at Tony Todd 54 and he's on Facebook. He has a like page. You know, I have friend requested you. Please be sure back in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, I don't and go to Facebook as often, but I will make sure. Thank you so okay. much. And Tony Todd 54, that's where they should really go to send out about I'm your one man day. show and different things. Well, the moment I wake up. Good, good, good. <laughs> so, you know, you've done a lot of different things recently. I saw you guys that follow me this morning. Yes, well, we, if yeah. I follow you anywhere. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> hey, I'm old, but I ain't dead. Right? <laughs> that's right. I've had that's several right. agents tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> So, so what are some of the recent projects that you've done, both film and TV? Well, this has been an incredible year. I just finished January and started a gig. I mean, for an actor to start the year working, coming out strong, there's no better feeling. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a young director, 23 years old. I had a, I always meet with my directors before I start shooting. Oh, I see. You have to. What was his name? Uh, Michael Steves. Michael and, Steves. And at the end of our meeting, so we can see we're on the same page, I said, where did you go to school, by the way? And he told me, Wesley. And I said, well, my daughter's undergrad school is Wesley. So where did you get out? They were classmates. Oh, so it was like world. full circle. Wait yeah. a minute, I had to get some understanding. Okay, I'm going to be directed by someone my daughter's age. Oh, but that happens to us all the it's time. It's okay. Yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's yeah. all right. Because as right. you get older, yeah, yeah, you start yeah, yeah, things yeah. coming yeah, back they get around. Younger and younger. Yeah, you're younger, <laughs> but it's okay because they give you that energy. That's right, they do. And this 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 young man wrote this script called Cold Descent, and it's a supernatural. Cold Western that takes place on a train, okay? Nice. Uh, very compact. Ver uh, Michael Eklund, myself, Richard Reilly, Lance Hendrickson are all involved. Nice crew, and nice cast. Yeah, yeah, very and well shot. And this kid is on his way. He also his first film was at Slam Dance this year, so that was good. Is there that, he is, is Michael Steves. Yeah. Well, good they, for from you, from young Houston, man. From Houston, Texas, Archie Bell and the Drills. Very nice. Um, and don't you find that directors that like you keep asking you back over and over and over? That's been one of my secrets. See, I used to curse people out on set sometimes. Sometimes because I was passionate after the studio, you know, say what you feel, yeah, don't yeah, hold yeah, it back. Don't do that. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, if you if they deserve it, you yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. But well, we lately say. in the last five, yeah. ten years, I have a lot of repeat work with directors. That's right. You go in, you do your job, you give a hundred percent, hundred and ten percent even if you're capable right. of and it. And they know that you, they can count on you. Yeah. All things being equal, if two actors can both do the job, the director's gonna choose the person with the least amount of baggage and even better if they have some sort of familiarity with, with that you. person's That's work. Right. Great. And as a person. Wonderful advice. It's better Wonderful to be advice. a person. If you're a good person, you can do whatever you want, whether That's it's right. music, acting, sculpting, flying a kite. You can do whatever you want. That's Just it. do it. Do it hard. You're watching Actors Eat Chat. I'm your host, Pepper Jones. Go we'll strong! Go. Yes! <laughs> and be right back after we're for one of our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> The great thing about N Now Media is it's a one-stop shop. We are soup to nuts. We have writers, directors, producers, animators, motion graphics artists, editors, videographers, musicians, all under one roof. And we are a boutique creative house where we actually do the creative at much more affordable price and have the staff in-house to execute it professionally. My name is John Palacio. My name is Luis Montez. My name is Paul Robinson. I am Jesse Cervantes. I'm Curtis Peel. My name is Ben Joran. One of the most common questions we have from potential clients is how does it work? What happens when you engage N Now Media to create a video, a marketing campaign? It first starts with, you know, obviously having the phone conversation with the client, brainstorm with them to come up with a really good concept and a really good idea to push whatever they're trying to do to the next level. Only with that in mind can we really try to tailor a concept and a script for their exact audience that fits in with their branding and the message they want to tell. We'll storyboard it out, get a real rough idea uh, of what we want to do. We'll then present the client with a couple of options, the different ways that we could go with some of the things that we've come up with. And they'll say, this is good, and then we'll come back and we'll start animating that or designing it or editing it. Our clients are generally, you know, like to be really hands-on, and we'd like to hear from you kind of all along the board. There's no surprises. What we like to do with every partner is we actually create a page on the EndNow website. So they can give feedback, and that way, when the time we get to the final product, 
you know, usually there's not a whole lot more revision to do because they, we've already been working together the whole time. The big difference is that, that real personal creative touch. We have a creative group that can execute that vision, whether it's animation, video, motion graphics, and do so with some unique creative that is custom tailored to that business. You know, dream it up. It's video. It's magic. It can happen. Hi, welcome back to Actors Eat Chat. I'm really having a good time here. This is Pepper J with Tony Todd. Yay. Hello, Pepper. Yay. Yay. The crowd roars. <laughs> so, um, going All back to theater jazz. in a moment, um, you just, you've just you done so much theater, and you recently worked theater with... Theater keeps me honest. Yes. You know, I do a film. I do a, If I do a mainstream film right. that pays for me doing independent films, it also allows me to take a break and do theater whenever I want it. And so one of and the I most recent things that you've done is with uh, Well, I, last a year ago this time, I was in Denver. Uh, uh, the Denver Theater Club mm -hmm. was a very respected regional theater. Yes. Got to work with Che Yu, who's the artistic director of the Victory Gardens uh -huh. in Chicago, and Marcus Gardley, who's the up-and-coming August Wilson. Oh, August nice. Wilson is the person I originated King Henry II with. Oh, that's right. And, and I also uh, got to work with Athel Fugard, who's one of the most renowned. There's August. There's August. Rest in peace, yeah, August. Yeah, Brilliant. That was a real His loss. Tim Play Cycle, the African American Experience set yeah. in Pittsburgh. Real His talent. Talent in depth. Right. And he listened to the women that raised him. Yeah. Talking about women, you've, uh, you've worked for some women directors. Any yeah, thoughts on that? Yeah, I did. Uh, well, uh, it's a compassionate, it's an, a different way of looking at the world that I, yeah. I like exploring. Uh, I just did a film with this woman named Lou Simon called Agoraphobia. Agoraphobia. Which is, uh, you know, the fear of being outside. Anyway, I play. Now that's a, interesting. Yeah, I play a psychiatrist in that one. But she's a talent that's, that's uh, definitely. Interesting. Uh, oh, and here's the good. poster for that. Right. Why do they always use blues when they're mm. trying to be scary? Well, it is scary. I use my face when I'm not a prominent person. <laughs> 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 okay, let's okay. get that poster. <laughs> let's get that poster. I mean, uh, I have a movie coming out tomorrow called Vanish. Uh, Vanish. Which is uh, another young filmmaker, but uh, uh, me and Danny Trejo are in that. Uh, we both Danny have Trejo. one scene one of my favorites. in the piece, and we're both on uh -huh. the poster. Go oh, figure. well, that's because I of the, you're recognizable. But I, don't, but I, I started but I don't the show like out saying you're one of the most recognizable, yeah. and probably Danny Trejo is also. Yeah, yeah. Probably Danny's two of the great. most recognizable people that we have, and there it is, Vanish. Vanish. And there out you are. Tomorrow. Yeah, very nice, very yeah. nice. And uh, let's it's a good see. film, actually. It's very Hitchcock Hitchcockian. So, you know, we can go back to some of your credits, but I really mm -hmm. want to know. Your one man show. It's not yeah. the first one man show, no, it's but my it's second. coming out this. Thursday. Well, we're doing a benefit performing this Thursday at the Steve Allen Theater for the L.A. Press Club. Okay, LA so this Club. is February about 20, so that'd be like Six, February three days. 26, yeah, right. 2015, mm -hmm. so don't go there in 2016, and there right. it is, Ghost in the House, and if you want to find more out about that, you can go to yeah. the press, press, L.A. Press Club dot org. L.A. Press Club dot org site and find out more about yeah. that. This so play was written yes, by me. Frank Magna and Ernie Hudson, both oh, uh -huh. good friends of mine. Both I was talking to Ernie last night Were at you? the Oscar party. What oh, a great wow. guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, good people. He, was, he and I were in a crow together. We've been in two or three films. Yeah. But this is, about, this is friends. about Jack Johnson, the, the great boxer that was... Exiled oh, and there's America. Los Angeles Press Club. If you want to learn, know where Ghost in the House is performing, then please go and check that out. Get all the details because you don't want to miss this young man. That's for sure. He's hard to miss. He's six foot five inches of him. Yeah, but I try to come in the room under stealth. No, control. but you're six foot five inches of goodness, honey. Okay, thank you. I mean, truly. Positive light. You know, the kind of person whose eyes, heart, and mouth are all in sync. <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah, that's probably so. most one part. That and family, I can right? I still see family is first. That's right. That's family right. is first that's and right. believing in whatever it is you believe in. So tell me more about Ghost in the House. Well, it's a wonderful piece. It's uh, an hour. It's the last 90 minutes of Jack Johnson's life. Jack was the first African-American champion in, in, in boxing. And, uh, and uh, he had a love and an appetite, a racist appetite for food, fast hands, fast cars, and exciting women. And, uh, <laughs> Surprising, and it was, yeah. It was his undoing. Uh -huh, and, I would uh, imagine. Subsequently, he had to spend two years in exile in Europe. And, yeah. and to why this was day, that? Oh, and there you because go. Because that was the only There's way. Jack that's Johnson. the only way that they could take the title from him. 
Uh, oh. and like, we're talking 1910. Yeah, and they didn't this like black men no, being so yeah, high yeah, up and above themselves. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. He's gotten so many speeding tickets, and most of them came from police officers who couldn't stand the sight of a black man behind the wheel of an expensive automobile. Which is probably one of I his mistakes. Like <laughs> <owned> <laughs> I yeah. tell everybody if you're behind yeah, an right? expensive yeah. automobile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what is that In 1910. About? Yeah, that's so, right. Uh, but the man that was, oh, you know. Oh, my goodness, I can't yeah, believe you've got you go. that shot. He spent five Five languages, world travel the world as an inventor, a published right. author, a nightclub owner. Did he die and, uh, young? No, he died at the age of 67. So that's not young, because I'm a, 65, and that's he, he, not young, he, but it's not old no, either. No, and he died in a car accident because he was refused service in a, in a, in a restaurant in North Carolina. And he's, 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 Amazing. We've come a long way, I'll temper. tell you. I just no. hard to even believe what's, that, what's, that the laws were... Anyway, that's but what's relevant about this yes. play, because we want to tour it to like right? colleges throughout the oh, world and mm -hmm. at-risk communities like Ferguson, where people oh, yes. need belief and hope that you know they can stand up for their for their rights. Right. Uh, ultimately, we're just going to get a New York production, and we have people talking to us as we speak. So, so that's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. So you're doing a benefit this mm -hmm. Thursday, mm -hmm. and then if they Important go to the LA benefit. Press. They'll uh, keep up with dot org. They'll keep doing. up with where they can yeah. see you, and they can buy tickets at on that site. On that same site, right. that is fabulous. Right. That is fabulous. Ghost in the house. Thank you. Dirt Mr. Jack it. Johnson. Don't pardon miss it. Jack Johnson. Yes. His pardon is on Obama's desk as we speak, and hopefully, that? finally. Yeah. Well, there's be a lot of pardons that I'd like to throw at well, him if he would well, do. Of but course. you know, what are you going to well, do? Well, yeah. the exit strategy is. Well, we'll see. We'll see what he does. That'll be. That would be significant if you did that. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, so, the same plight that affected Jack Johnson is similar to Obama's situation in some respects. I don't want to talk about mm, politics well, because not, then yeah. half of our audience will turn us off. <laughs> well, yeah, no, so we'll they see. won't. Yeah. It's all part of life. Yeah, I guess. I guess. So let's talk about the other movies that. I mean, didn't you see last doing. night in the Academy Awards, that certain people were able to take that last sixty seconds and get out a political statement. I mean, well, sometimes see, if you I, have that audience. I like that yeah. in the right place. In the right place. But, but I, mean, I just don't know. Anyway, that's another discussion okay. we can have. That's yeah. another discussion that we can have. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I'm not going to start soapboxing. Tell me who we're looking at. That's Bernard, is it? Is that the Frankenstein? Yeah. Yes, Bernard. Oh, yeah. that's Bernard. This is Bernard before he, but he grew his hair out a little bit. Since. Is that what it is? I yeah. couldn't tell from Frankenstein the Frankenstein is going to be an amazing film. you got uh -huh. this young kid named Xavier Samuel, okay. who's uh, in the Twilight films and Quentin Fury. And he plays, but he's the monster is played from a slight, as if these two scientists are trying to create a child. you got Danny Houston and Carrie Ann Moss. Another nice being his cast. Scientist, myself. And what role are you playing? Well, in the original the film. No, no. In the no. original, that's an allegory for Oh, I can't yeah. keep track with that's all okay. your roles. I and can. who is this? I remember each one is uh, this Xavier. No, that's Xavier. Yeah. Oh, that's a great photo. Yeah, he's a great, great young talent. Nice. Anyway, in the original film, Frankenstein, he encounters a blind man in mm -hmm. the woods that, that can't see how disfigured he is. Right. So Bernard has a knack for transposing stories. So this takes place in current day L.A. Yes. And I play a homeless, blind blues musician. Wow. Who adopts this monster under the Sixth Street Bridge and, you know, tries wow. to teach him the ways of the world. And how was that for you? How is it for you to prepare for someone that is not sighted? Uh, you have your other senses are highly... Do you have someone training you or helping you no, with no, that? No, no, no. It's just you, you just take away his sense and everything else is elevated. His sense of touch was uh -huh. just incredible. And the biggest fear was that we had to rise to Muddy Waters' Manish Boy, which is a great blues classic. Uh -huh. And so I had to work with some guitarists and I have some great blues musicians as a personal friend I'm handing out in Chicago. Do you I, sing? Do you play any instruments? Uh, I did for this. I do play a this Wabash guitar. But, so cool. But so what I kind of guitar? A, a Wabash. Nice. It's a nice little thing to nice. play for myself. But I got to do it, and I did it in front of a crew of 50 people, and it worked. That's the so cool. The film opens with an eight-minute take of Manish Boy under the Sixth Street Bridge. Oh, very nice. So hopefully Muddy Waters, thank you. Oh, yeah, well, Muddy Waters. Listen, kids out there, you're talking, when we say Muddy Waters, we're not talking about a dirty river here. We're talking about one of the most instrumental people yeah. in the music business ever, Absolutely. I, I, the way I feel, yeah. you know. Show us a picture of Money Waters, because I know the people under 20 are thinking, yeah, come what on. are we talking about here? What are we talking about? What Chicago talking blues about and tradition. This is, now here yeah, he is, yeah. right there. Oh, yeah. I mean, he just... Yeah, ripped it. Ripped yeah, it. he just ripped was it. all there. You know, when the there. combination all fits into place, you come from a great place, you right. have a good 
upbringing, or even if you don't, but right. you're able and to you make that point, it. you overcome right. it, you change your life, you change That's circumstances, right. and you find something, whether it's right. a guitar, uh, a writing, acting, right. you being a host and meeting all these for sure incredible people to come in like and Like you, studio, number one. You know, and, yes. uh, and, and you tell well, the world, I'll, I'll share. tell you, that's true. And, and, and one thing is, is that you can't choose your family. You can't choose how you get raised, but you can choose what you do with it. Absolutely. And, and I think that that is really the beginning and end of your own control over yourself. Control over your that destiny. You really do control a whole lot of your life. And, and no matter how old or how young you are, you can start right this moment to start doing anything else that you want to be doing that's positive and good and holy. That's the way I feel. That's it. You know, it's yeah. true, it's true, it's true. Spirit conscious art. That's right. Oh, I love that. Ooh, I'm going to use that. Spirit conscious art. I love it. You're watching Actors Eat Chat. I'm your host, Pepper J. We'll be right back after word from one of our sponsors. Hey everyone, I am Judith Jones. If you are looking for photographs, which a lot of you are, let's face it, we need photographs every day, actors, models, even if you're just, you know, the milkman, you need photographs, okay? You need to look good. And if you wanna look good, you've only got one man to go to, and that's John Michael Ferrari. You see, I needed to look, I needed to look good. So I went to John and he basically took me to the most beautiful place in LA and took these wonderful photographs of me and I really didn't even recognize myself because I just looked, well, let's just face it, I looked stunning. So if you wanna look stunning like myself in those photographs, uh, go to him, he will make you look beautiful. If you're pretty, he'll make you look prettier. If you're not pretty, he'll make you look pretty. John Michael Ferrari. That's all you need to know. So go to imagesbyferrari.com, that's the website, imagesbyferrari.com, and you can check out all his photography, and you can contact him there. You can look at a picture of me. He directed me, because if you need direction, which, hello, I do, uh, he directs you too. So go and check that out, imagesbyferrari.com. You'll love it, you'll look great. Check it out, bye everyone. Welcome back to Actors Eat Chat. I'm your host, Pepper J, with me, the extraordinary Tony Todd. And going back to your TV, one of the favorite TV shows of just about anybody is 24. And mm. that was a nice role. Yeah, I actually was able to appear on that twice. And uh, I think one of three actors has done that, two different roles. I played a detective first. And, and then, there we are, yeah, 24, Keith or and, uh, Sullivan. Amazing, yeah. and I. Uh, so is his dad. That was ex so was his dad. So is his dad. Is, is his dad? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And uh, that's one of the few people that have ever come back twice for two different roles. Y yeah. Then the second one was huge. It was uh, we went to South Africa. So that was my third time going to Africa. Uh, Where did you go? In, oh, in South, South Africa, Africa, Johannesburg. Johannesburg. Um, and uh, you know, I played an African ruler that comes over to the United States and takes over the White House. So it was season seven. I was oh, the that's Arts a nice League. one. Yeah. Got to slap Cherry Jones, wonderful actress. <laughs> How is that to try to slap someone? Uh, I slapped the president, so that was. Oh, there right you after go. That, after I that, was dispatched what else is there? into another what role. Else is there? Good, good, good. <laughs> Tell me about Sushi Girl. Sushi Girl. Have a, a little clip yeah. too, while while we're talking. Sushi Girl is a film that was written by Dustin Fath and Kurt yes. Saxon, two young filmmakers and good friends of mine. And uh, I had produced it. I was executive producer of that. Oh, uh -huh. I was managed uh -huh. to get Mark Hamill. Oh and yeah, great, Andy, great, great. Andy McKenzie, Jimmy Duvall, Noah Hathaway, Courtney Palm, uh, Danny Trejo, and wow. Jeff Fahey. Amazing. Yeah. It's so beautifully yeah. shot. Oh, it's great. We should, yeah. Anyway, so and I great just played this iconic character as a gangster, and things happen as I they guess. always do. Wow. Oh, look at you! Oh, yeah. look at you! Real Cuban cigar. Unbelievable! Gosh, one of the most recognizable yes. actors anywhere, anywhere. Tony Todd, amazing. And I think we have a little bit of. Uh, thank you, Jeremiah. Show me a little bit of the real, as I'd like to show a little bit. I think we have some Star Trek clips and some other things. And uh, let's just take a look at that real quick. Thank you. There we go. Let's see. That's not you. Ah. We have a little sound. Maybe we come up. Put go a little bit later in it. This is not cute. I'm sorry. Historical Society, in association with Memory Alpha, presents the Four Years' War. There we go. 
That's it, that's it. Nothing short of extraordinary. But it represents something very different to the Klingon Empire. Growing tired of diplomacy, their High Chancellor proclaims, if words were water, the humans would drown us all. The bad blood between the humans and the Klingons meant that the job of preventing war and leading the peace delegations fell to Vulcan. Regrettably, we failed. They've been expanding their empire for 200 years. That was just at a Federation Thank you, German. I'm really proud of that's making the festival story. Right. It's 25 minutes, but it's about an estranged relationship. This film festival thing is just really interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. Tell me about the show. It's called Cowboys Girls. It's written by this woman named Deanna Nicole Baxter. Uh huh. And it's about an estranged relationship between a father and daughter. Parental things are very important to me. Right. And this guy is a mess. Mm -hmm. and they try to patch up their relationship after eight years of separation. Interesting, interesting. So and you have a wonderful there. relationship with your daughter, Absolutely. don't you? Absolutely, daughter and son. And son, yeah. uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Is your son also in the business? Uh, no, he's a musician. A musician. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of being in the kind business. Kind of in the business. He didn't yeah, go yeah, to yeah. school like uh -huh. I wanted him to do, but he's, right. find, he's finding his w yeah, right way to use the strong. We all try to find our way. I think yeah. that's what you probably raised him to do. Try to find to his own be, way. Well, as an artist, I can't say you have to go to school. No, yeah, no. You have to find that's your right. path. So. That's right. That's and my right. daughter's in art therapy, so it's one step removed. Oh, now that's really yeah. interesting, too. Yeah. She's a healer. And so are you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, no, no. I, 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 I think you are. I think you are. And then, um, I was going to ask you one more thing. Well, so let's remember that we have a one-man show, mm -hmm. Ghost, Ghost in the, in the house. house. And I'd like to see where your websites are. Okay. You're on IMDb, which is the Internet, new, bleh, Internet Movie Database. That mm -hmm. tells you, let's scroll down a little bit, just to see. If you look down and you keep going, every single one of those is a movie or a TV show, or some of them are many, many episodes of a TV show, and we would keep scrolling down forever and ever and ever. That's just like incredible that you're on all of these things. And you're also on Facebook. Yeah. And that would be Tony Todd on Facebook. There you are, and I love that picture. Who was that photographer? Do you remember? Uh, this is a film, a still from the film. Oh, so is this it? is Kern Saxon, the director. Wow, and Steve what film was that? Sushi Girl. Oh, that was Sushi Girl. Yeah. I love that picture yeah. of you. And, and I friend request, you're going to like it. Mm -hmm. And this is you on, on uh, Twitter. Twitter. Tony Todd, five, four. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Can first, I see the top, uh, top, top? Do you see? Do we see your heads? Mm, oh, we don't see their heads. That's very clever. Mm. <laughs> very clever. Very clever. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then you can find me also on IMDb. Awesome. AAA, yeah, and that's are. PepperJ.com. Thank you so mm. much. And that's me and my dog that uh, I lost, RJ, on uh, Facebook. And then I'm also at Twitter at PepperJ. And so please follow and like and, and all of those things. Fantastic. And I'd like to send you over right now to a wonderful rapper host, Sonia Hartley, who Hartley is going to tell us a little more about Actors eChat. Hi, I'm Sonia Hartley, one of your Actors eChat hosts. Thank you for joining us on Actors eChat. We are now 6 million viewers strong from all over the world, and we really appreciate you. Actors eChat shoots live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific time from the Pepper J Production Studio right in Hollywood, California. Want to see all of today's episode or any other Actors eChat episode? Please visit ActorsEntertainment.com and put the talent's name in the search box. For instance, like if you're looking for Sonia Harley, for me, put in Sonia Harley, and we'll take you right where you need to go. And go ahead and visit the Actors Entertainment on imdb.com. That's the internet movie database to see the more than 1,300 entertainment industry professionals that have been guests on Actors eChat. And social media is so important, so please follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at Actors Entertain, and join us on Facebook at Actors Entertainment fan page. And don't forget to like us, because those likes they really do help out. Stay tuned for our Actors Reporter animation, which won Best Animation at the Telly Awards. Great job, and Now Media, and Pepper J Productions, and terrific singing by Melissa Suzanne. And now, a special thank you to today's Actors eChat guest. <laughs> Welcome back to Actors eChat. I'm your host, Pepper J, and I'm with here, Tony Todd. 
Tony Todd, Ghost in the House. You're actually heading off to a rehearsal yeah. for that. Yeah. Yes, uh -huh. awesome. We're going to so spend four hours. We're in our tech days and stuff, which is when we add in incorporated lights. And we have a lot of multimedia stuff. But I still have to do what I do, which right. is to make it better, make it better, right, make it right, better, right. make it better. Always. You know? Well, you know, we have produced a show for Actors Reporter called uh, Actors Day in L.A. Mm -hmm. Maybe on one time you'll come and let us do a little bit of footage of you and interview you for just for that show sometime. You should. You should I would come love to that. our rehearsals sometime. I would love that. Yeah. So now I'd like to pick your brain. Okay. Audition hints. Mm -hmm. Some of the types of questions that we get is when do you get into character? Mm -hmm. When you get out of your car, when you get into the lobby, when mm -hmm. you're actually walking in, when you're saying hello, when you slate your name, right. when do you start your character? Well, if I think for the moment you get the material, you have to first, your first task is to look at the stuff and try to find out how am I like this person? What parts of me can I put into this role? And then how am I different from this person? And somewhere the combination between the two is going to give you the answer for what is this character's point of view? What does this person feel about themselves in relationship to the world? For example, when Muhammad Ali was at his prime, his point of view was, I am the greatest. He and every the greatest. single moment uh -huh. and every single fiber of your right. being goes to playing that point of view. Uh -huh. Then you figure out what it is you want. Muhammad Ali. What it is to One of I John's want. favorite people in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. The man. Yes, and, then, and then between those two things, you, uh -huh. that's all you have to play. And the whole time on the day of an audition, while you're in your car, right. when you wake up, when you're brushing There's your Muhammad teeth. There's Muhammad Ali. I am the greatest. I am the greatest. He did more for I people. I mean, all people. Yeah. Of all people. Uh, I, Jack Johnson was one of his inspirations. Jack was Johnson it? is oh, the character yeah, in Ghost yeah, in the yeah, House. Yeah, yeah. That's where the title comes from. Bundini, uh, Bundini used to say in the corner, Ghost in the House, Ghost yes. in the House, to remind Ali that the spirit of Jack Johnson was hovering. I didn't while know that. Watching. Yeah. Boy, things are so circular, aren't they? Huh? See, circular. Things are yeah, circular in life. Yeah, circular. It's yin and yang. Wow. It's infinity. So, also about auditions. Mm -hmm. So, what you're really saying, I know I'm wild, is you don't come in doing what you think they want. No, you, you bring just, what you would you bring be part you of are. you. And because if they it. call you to say that we want you to come in, they already are interested in your essence. In your so aspect you, of it, what yeah, your take so of the bring character it. is. Don't worry about who's else is out That's in the right. hallway. I'm not a big fan of chatting it up in the hallway. Right. If I, I know a lot of people say, hey, how are you doing? But this right. is business. Right. We are here. They're going to pick the best person for this job. Right. So don't waste time trying to plan and about what And that's another question is how you, how you greet people both in the lobby and in the audition yeah. room. Well, you, you know be them. Kind, you and, be kind. But you be short, right? Kind yeah. and polite. Well, and sh yeah. Hey, yeah. how you doing? And how you, you doing? just this go back to task. your business. This is not a, a, a social, social club. meeting. Uh, right. <laughs> you right. want to get the job, you best believe. That's right. You know, and also you don't want to get pulled into negativity. Unfortunately, right. there's some actors that try to, you know. Psych you out. Yeah, that's why Hollywood Shuffle was so important. Mm -hmm. You just do your thing. Go in. When you go in the room, you come in there with confidence, not ego. Right. Confidence. Right. Right. I'm going to give you the right. best interpretation of this particular moment that I can. And they say you time. book the room, you don't book the role. Because if you do yeah. a good job, yeah. then they're going to know you for something else. Know. And that's happened to you. I like it when they just make an offer. Again. <laughs> well, what's, for Jeffrey Day, they audition. Oh, okay. for, for Tony Todd, they make her own, they give an offer. Offers are nice. That's because right. there are some actors that are not great auditioners because right. their the nerves are right. so wrecked right. and out mm -hmm. and they can't get to that sense. Do you memorize uh, pretty grace. much your sides before well, you go in? Uh, no, you don't want to completely memorize because mm -hmm. that means that you may not be workable, that you've right. already made too many choices right. that are not in, in conjunction right. with the writer and the director and producer. And what do you think? But you, oh, you are familiar with the character. Right. You know who it is. You know right. what it is about the character that relates to you. Uh -huh. How? What part of this is Tony? What part of this is Peppers? Right. And then you play that. Right. And you right. play it fully. You play it passionately. You play it like you so want it. Yeah, you, you own know? it. You own it. Right. You own right. that stuff. Right. That's like amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And then one of the like the best musicians, like the Tommy? Ray Charles, the Aretha's, oh, the Elvis's, yeah. the Prince's. You know, they own it. Right. right? And there, there is a connection between them and a higher power. Right. You got to find that aspect, and then the role will be yours. Well, I don't think I could best that. That was amazing. You are we besties now? Uh, I would like to be. Awesome. I would like to be <laughs> one of your besties. I want to just say Ron Brewington was supposed to sit in this seat. Thank you, Ron, Ron, for bringing me here. Ron is an amazing friend, a producer, host. He's the national vice president of the Motown Alumni Association. He's the 
uh, president of the LA Charter, the Tuskegee Airmen. Yes. He's a professor, teaches communications, entertainment communications and stuff. I, he's just amazing. And he had two flat tires, and it's the first time in all the years <laughs> that he's. But there he is. Oh, yay, Ron Brington. I just have to say, uh, you know, we missed you today. Yeah. Travel safe, my to, friend. Yes, I tried really hard to. Uh, T sit in your, not in your shoes because your shoes are too big, but try to be here. Thank you, and thank, well, thank you, you so, so much for being warm. a guest. Oh, you're just the cat's pajamas. Uh, for you kids, that means that he's really Tony hot stuff. <laughs> yes, yes. And thank you so, so much for joining us here on Actors Eat Chat. We're here live Monday through Friday from Hollywood, California. Check out this and any of the other shows on ActorsEntertainment.com. I'm your host, Pepper J. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. What's that? Actors Eat Chat Show? Happens to be my favorite in the morning. I want nothing but a cup of coffee, a bottle of Kahlua, six naked girl. Wait, no, that's not right. Actors Eat Chat Show. Thanks for joining us on Actors E Chat. Whether watching on the internet or on cable, remember to visit ActorsE.com and enjoy all your past Actor E Chat episodes. Just put your celebrity favorites in the search box. Actors E Chat is shot live from the Pepper J Production Studios in Hollywood, California. Actors E Chat is a Pepper J production. All rights expressly reserved in all formats. Thanks for watching. Oh my gosh, hey big Hollywood starlet that just happens to be walking by. Yes. I'm not from around here, but I want to be an actress just like you. What do I need to know? <gasps> Kid, let me tell you. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a naive newbie like you, there's one thing you need to know. To get my first job, I lived in a slum. Beat out 50 other girls to play a drunk bum. I cried. My first agent charged me 30%. Thanks. Working three jobs and I couldn't pay rent. But I'm an actor. She's an actor. A shark nod my leg on a B film in Sydney. To pay for the stitches, I sold my left kidney. I finally made a union. Their rules were complex. Their piles of paperwork fogged up my specs. But I'm an actor. She's an actor. I'm an actor. Rather disturbing, but what's the one thing I need to know? Don't listen to the critics, don't follow all the terms. Forget that sleazy photog and the agent that's got cramps. Go to Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Tricks and the secrets without all the sweat. An info packed one stop shop, it's free and on the net. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors How can they help her? Career cues, union news, makeup woes, advice from pros, insurance tips, choosing scripts, everything at your fingertips. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter.com. Oh, I just got a callback.